there's one of the reasons I so appreciate you being here is because of all the lawsuits and things that are challenging AI and copyright. You're actually talking about something that's not only bigger to me, but is really one of the core issues. Can AI get a copyright? So let's sort of go back to your origins of Creativity Engines and Davos. What brought about this idea to you? What, why does it make sense that AI should be able to get a copyright? My intent was not to build an invention machine. Mm -hmm. It was to essentially create a laboratory for studying machine consciousness and sentience. And so that's where I got in a lot of trouble because I would take neural networks that were trained on some conceptual space and then purposely kill the neurons in them. Yeah. And when it died, it would generate new, potentially new and valuable ideas. So that's when the idea came to me probably in the late eighties to start adding critics to yeah. watch for the good ideas and to selectively reinforce them within the generator. Go back in time. It's really a good story because, I mean, the whole idea of uh, Davis, creativity machines and so forth goes back to my terrible twos. I decided to eat a tin of 24 quinine tablets. And then I washed it down with a Pepsi bottle containing kerosene and woke up in the hospital, obviously in coma, and had the classic near-death experience. And you can read about this on the internet, but essentially I, I fell through the proverbial tunnel and then arrived at a blue star around which I saw little angel-like objects flying around. And uh, one was my grandmother, who I was very close to, and the other was my dog, who I was equally close to. And grandma says, it's not your time yet, but um, we're sending you back and with this lesson. And the lesson was, hey, it's an illusion. Uh, it's a good illusion, but it's still an illusion. So basically it was near-death experience that essentially created the creativity machine, the visual art, the music and so forth were collateral benefits of that sentence because it had the motivation, the intent to go ahead and invent something new, to conceive new concepts. I'm still not really concentrating on the invention part, the copyright part. It has more to do with convincing the world sentient AI has been created. And the only thing missing right now is the the bundle of money that goes to people who cry louder and have their social network extending to billionaires. Uh, but no, it's here. It's in black and white. It's patented. So had nothing to do with invention and creativity, which I think is a major point to make to your listeners. The invention was done long ago and the patents talk about simulating human creativity, but this is actual creativity coming out of not computer algorithms, but whole systems that achieve sentience, that have feelings. Hmm. And that's an important distinction. I just think we could progress so much faster without debating whether it's human, which is just the laws. And well, Davis right is human. As far as I'm concerned, it just doesn't have that odor of a human <laughs> being, you know? Right. My famous saying is if it's if it's not stinky, it doesn't deserve a copyright or patent.